Привет, меня зовут Брэшбос или Инфантерия. Я из России и хотел бы немного поговорить об Escape from Tarkov, так как норвенская экономическая зона, являющаяся местом действия игры это Запад России, а разработчики игры русские, многие вещи им удается передать очень детально. Например, общежитие на таможне. Я на них с точки зрения университетского студента могу сказать, что именно так и выглядят дешевые общежития в России. Если детально рассматривать декорации игры, видны усилия разработчиков, направленные на сохранение баланса между сложным сеттингом, в котором интересно играть, и сохранением в игре атмосферы опустошения и запущенности для качественной передачи российских пейзажей. Российское оружие скопировано разработчиками идеально, и это одна из основных причин, по которым игра мне нравится. Игра делает все возможное, чтобы сделать разницу между одними и тем же действиями в реальной жизни и в игре как можно более незаметно. Другая причина, по которой в игре я себя чувствую как дома, дикие разговаривают на рандом не языке, русском. Озвученные не очень правдоподобно. Также на впечатление, которое они производят на игрока, сильно влияет количество и богатство маты и отсутствие цензуры. Что интересно, боты используют разные фразы в зависимости от того, перестреливаются ли они с кем-то или нет. Так что очень важно их слушать. Но это тема для другого видео на этом канале. Game is popular here in Russia. The stepchild of the Stalker series, having a different team working on it, but making it for the same player base. There are a lot of people here who would want to see the game released in full. Hope you found the info useful. This was Brush Boss. Enjoy the rest of the video. Hello guys, my name is Red7 and this is the Weekly Recap, a series of EFT videos where we talk about EFT news, review patches, analyze new items, criticize the game and share precious infos and opinions in the comments. We got an incoming patch and everyone is excited to see the new changes, the new items and weapon attachments, some of which I will show and talk about a bit in this video. And to make burning gear real and being able to test all the current in-game items, the devs made some changes to the traders. Everything got unlocked, but the buying prices got a lot higher and the selling prices went down a lot. This makes buying, insuring and repairing very hard. I was playing and wanted to buy an item case, which normally is around 12k euros, but then I realized it went suddenly to 24k euros. It's interesting to see a lot of geared players on factory with rare weapons, a lot of meds and fort armors, but I also found level 4 players with nothing but hatchets. Here are the new attachments or items that we want to have a look to in this video. A new ACOG scope, very probably the TA-01, as you can see in this picture. What is different between the one we, see, we will see in the game and the real-life one is that lower platform, not really sure why the difference. But someone will explain that in the comments, like usual. The one we currently have in the game is the 3.5 by 35 TA-11D. This new ACOG scope is 4x32 and it's a very nice one with some new reticles which by the way are illuminated for low light situations. In real life this scope features black crosshair during daytime and tritium illuminated reticle at night. It ranges up to 800 meters according to the Trijican webpage. A Russian oil filter probably used for missions and for trading and who knows if the devs thought about making an improvised suppressor or some sort of IAD out of it. I don't know if that last one is even possible. Then we have this frac immobilizer which is nothing but a simple method of splitting suspected limb fractures while helping to prevent further damage to surrounding nerves and tissue according to the official web. 
Next we have an emergency tourniquet. How will this work in the game? How it is going to be used? How will influence the use of bandages? What animation or animations it will have? It remains to be seen. I am really curious about this. A two-piece military standard handguard for the M4. Although simple, this handguard has an option for adding grips and or other attachments to it, as you can see in this picture. The famous nice looking STSH-81 Sphere Helmet. This is a Russian helmet which was produced somewhere at the beginning of the 80s. Initially it was made from titanium, but later a steel variant got also produced. The helmet has three plates, two rounded ones on the sides and a kind of semicircle on top of them in the middle. It's a very hard helmet according to the guys who have it in real life, around 2.3-2.5 kilos, but it offers a lot of protection due to that Russian class 2 armor according to Google. The steel variant is even heavier than the titanium one. Then we have a small game real life comparison from a gun which seems to be the RPK-16 according to the gun vets. The attachment, the piece we are seeing could be a RPK-16 rear trunnion. Now am I 100% sure this is true? Nope, I quoted Jack Hernandez on this one but if you look closely to that real life variant you will see that the appearance is, yeah, identical. It is indeed a very nice looking weapon, I must admit I didn't know about the existence of this RPK variant. And lastly, a remade fort armor with the ability to carry pouches and with the addition of groin and lower back protection, according to a famous EFT streamer. And if you think we are done with checking out new cool additions, then you're wrong. There are some more things we briefly have to talk about. First, there is the CAA Picatinny rail system for the AKS, which looks very cool and adds variety to this beautiful weapon. But devs, please reduce the recoil of this weapon a bit, it's too big. Is it like that in real life as well guys? Never shot the AKS in real life, that's why I'm asking. Then we see this s -Val with that nice ring or rail on the front side, which also looks very promising. A MP5 with some rails as well, finally a front grip to the normal MP5 and maybe some lanterns and some more shit like that. And probably a 10 round mag for the Saiga, the real one I found can only fit 10 rounds inside. Who knows, maybe there are bigger ones out there apart from that drum mag. And that should be it for this week folks, my advice for when the patch comes is to don't rush into completing the game very fast. Don't rush the missions, enjoy your in-game time with the pistol, with that first shotgun you find, with the first SMG you take from the bots, with that first Kedder. After a while, the fourth armor will be very popular again, sadly, and you will not be able to use all those beautiful low caliber weapons anymore, because they will do nothing or almost nothing against Fort. Sometimes I wish Fort Armor was not in the game at all because of those beautiful weapons which we cannot use. Or maybe adding a mod where Fort Armors are not allowed, that would be fun as well. Till the next weekly recap or till the next video, I wish you guys a nice week, a lot of good finds and a lot of fun during your raids. Patrons, thank you for your awesome support and thank you viewer for watching my content. I will leave you with the CFX squad boys, they made a video about the current EFT aim punch issue. Also check their channel, they have a lot of cool stuff you guys can watch there. Red7 out, peace! Alright, today we test 9mm. You are going to shoot me for the game, I, this is my life now. <laughs> okay. Yes, you ready? Ready. Let's go. Punch is so high. <laughs>